Hey guys, welcome to video 12 of the Hacked Existence How to Build a Django Website series. Um, this is going to be part 3 of building a Facebook tab. And in this video, we're specifically going to look at the Facebook Open Graph API um, as implemented with the JavaScript SDK. So what we're hoping to accomplish um, by now, this is our tab right now, we have all of our beers put in here. Now what we need to have our tab do is when you select a beer, we need to have it show all your friends. Um, so it's going to have to go get the friends list, build this whole matrix of images and names. And then once we actually click on a friend, it's going to have to actually create this post back out to the Facebook API. So let's take a look. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to build this one all by scratch. This took me a long time to actually write and work out. So I'm going to copy and paste most of it from what I already have done. Um, but I'll walk you guys through where each part comes from. And as long as you follow along, you should be able to implement this for your own stuff. So the first thing that we need to do um, is get, if you go to the developers.facebook.com, click on documentation. Um, we're specifically going to go through the websites part because we're actually embedding this on an iframe that exists on our server, not on Facebook's server. Um, from here, we're just going to jump straight into the SDK reference and look at the JavaScript SDK. Um, so we're going to do a lot of this same stuff. This is how you load the actual uh, Facebook JavaScript SDK in your site. Um, and then we'll look at some of the other stuff in here for actually doing actions. We're going to check uh, you're going to make a few calls out to fb.api and that's really your interface to get stuff onto people's walls um, to have them post, to pop alerts, things like that um, so yeah, let's get started first thing we need to do is copy and paste this into our template So. In our templates, in our Facebook tab folder, we're going to go into our beer gifter and we're going to add this to the body. Um, so now we have to actually fill this stuff in. So for our app ID, let's go get our app ID. So here's our app ID. I'm just going to paste that there. All right, we had a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, let's try and create this channel file now. So inside my Facebook tab folder, I'm going to do channel.html. And we're just going to paste uh, what it says to paste in there. Alright, then I'm going to go into my URLs, and we're going to make a URL for that. It's going to be Facebook tab slash channel.html. It's going to be a direct to template. And we're going to feed it the template we just created. Our template folder name, Facebook tab. All right, so now let's restart our server. Now let's see if we can actually get there. Okay, so we have the script loading there. Okay, so now we have our URL for our channel file. So we'll go back into our Facebook tab, into our beer gifter template, and we'll set our URL here.
And since Facebook really likes SSL, we'll use HTTPS. Alright, and then we can leave all these true. Um, we don't need anything there. Alright, so let's write this. And let's go look and see if there's any errors. Alright, so now we have our function running, um, loading the Facebook SDK into here. Alright, so let's take a look at what the next piece that we need is. Okay, so the way I've done this is to make a function called share beer. And then we put an on click on all of the images here. So every one of these images has an on click um, that shares that specific beer. So let's look at the share beer function right here. Okay, so we pass in all the information about the beer that we're going to need later. And what we do is we add that information to um, hidden divs that we put at the bottom of the page. And this is so that we can hide this whole div and then show a new div with everybody's face in it. Um, but once somebody clicks on a face, we still need all the information from which beer they checked. So we do that by creating these divs and hiding it there. So let's, uh, let's put this function in first. Alright, so here above our script, close tag, we're going to put in this function called share beer. <clears throat> Alright, so now we have to create all of these divs. So we're going to go down to the bottom of our page here, right above body, and we're going to create a div for each one of these. Uh, we're going to give them a class so that we can hide them all in CSS. Alright, so now we have all these beers, or all these divs created. Um, now we need to deal with this class, hidden div, and we're going to go hide them. So we're going to go up here into our style, and then we're going to say dot hidden div display none. All right, so now in our beers down here. So instead of these being hrefs that point to the actual page on our site, um, we're going to have these call share beer and pass it all the information for each beer. Um, that share beer will then copy into these hidden divs. So let's take a look at how to do that. Okay, so. Okay, so we're going to start by making our href point to pound um, so that it doesn't go anywhere. It points to its own a tag. And then on click, we're going to add this share beer, and we're going to fill in this information from each beer object um, that's going to get passed into our share, share beer function. All right, so on click equals share beer and here we're going to pass it the image so it's going to be beer.image1.url the link is going to be a link to the beer page
And here we're going to say beer.name. Beer.brewery. Beer.type. And we're going to say beer.locality. Alright, so that's going to get all of our information out of the back end um, and populate this whole list that we're then going to pass on to ShareBeer to save it. Alright, so let's give that a try and see what happens there. So now if we actually click on this, you can see it linked me to pound, um, but let's actually take a look at our divs now. Uh, where's our error? Okay. So these should actually be wrapped inside of quotes. All right, let's try that again. All right, so our syntax is off here. Need to move this to here. Okay, so now we need to load jQuery um, because the dollar sign is not found, and that's our jQuery selector. So let's see. All right, so as always, we're going to load it from Google. Pop into Google, grab the latest version, and up here, just load jQuery. All right, so now let's go back over here and refresh. So that should have done it. Let's take a look. Okay, so you can see that um, inside these divs now we've stored all the information from clicking Boddington's into uh, all these hidden divs. Okay. So here, um, this D, we need to change that. Let's see. Okay, because locality um, actually maps to dictionary in our model, we need to use get locality display. Alright, so let's refresh, check out if that's fixed. Bug bug light, domestic, okay, instead of D now. So now um, our beer.type is not coming through. Okay, we don't have the beer type in here. So that's fine. Alright, so I'm just going to remove all the beer type stuff. So we can get rid of beer type here. We can get rid of beer type here. Get rid of beer type here. And we'll delete this div all together. Alright. So now we have 
this script on click filling out our hidden divs with all the information that we need let's look at the next thing we need to do okay so next we need to use this function let's copy that and paste it in here and we'll look at how it works Alright, so this function calls Facebook login, so we'll need to grab that function as well. Alright, so here's the general flow of what happens here. Um, let's first look at fb.git login status. Wow. Okay, so we're going to use this from the auth method. So it allows you to determine if a user is logged into Facebook and has authenticated to your app. Um, and here's all the code for it. You can actually just copy and paste this right over if you wanted. So what we're specifically checking for is um, if the status is not connected and the auth response is null we're going to call facebook login so that's going to call the fb.login function okay and this prompts the user to authenticate your application using the oauth dialog so this will take care of getting all the permissions that we need doing all that stuff for us um, and if you wanted any other kind of permissions or anything, you can put them all in here in a scope. Um, but all we're asking for is basic permissions to see someone's friends list so we don't have to declare a scope. Alright, so FB login gets called if they're not connected and they're not authorized. Um, it'll ask them to authorize your app or log into Facebook then if it is um, connected and you do get the auth response um, we make a call out to fb.api so um, specifically the slash me slash friends so let's take a look at that okay so this is how you interact with the graph and what we're looking for specifically is the friends list of whoever is clicking on the beer. Um, and they don't really give you a whole lot of information on here, which is pretty annoying. But if you dig deep, um, you can find stuff like this. So I did all the digging already for you guys. Um, you can call slash me slash friends and response.data will be the list of the friends. Um, one of the things that's really annoying is that Facebook won't sort it, so you have to implement your own sort. So we have a sort by name function here that uh, returns the alphabetical friends list. Um, and then all we do is iterate through each friend and cr we create a friends UL and we append an LI for each friend that has their ID number and their image from the Facebook graph as well as their name. Alright, so let's copy this over and take a look at what it does now. Okay, so at the end of this um, we have to hide some ULs and show some new ones so let's make sure this is hiding the right ULs. Um, this should actually be FB beers because we want the whole beers UL to disappear. Um, the whole actual div. 
That way we don't have to send users to another page. We don't have to deal with posting and getting variables. We can just hide the div when we're done with it, populate the friends div, and then show it. So I don't actually have one of those. Um, and then we need the friends div. So down here we're going to have a div id equals friends. And the class for this is going to be hidden div so that it inherits the CSS of hiding itself at the beginning and then we'll show it when you actually click on something. So in here we'll have a UL and we'll just close the UL um, because this jQuery here appends to a UL that's inside of friends. So we need to create that at the beginning. <clears throat> Alright, so it doesn't really work too well outside of Facebook. It doesn't really do anything. It won't pull up the Facebook API. So from here on out we have to actually test it inside of Facebook. Okay. So we're missing this sort function. I should probably copy and paste that in. Alright, so I had some difficulties. I cut out there for a while to try and figure out what was going on. Um, got it all figured out. So there are a couple things that I changed. So in our in our beer gifter template, um, so I moved this friends div here uh, with the UL inside of it into the FB container div. So before we had it down here outside of the div, um, that actually needs to be inside of the FB container div so that when we hide FB beers, uh, FB friends will show up in the same place. Um, one of the other, the main thing that I did is if you go into your developer panel uh, on Facebook and click on edit app, um, what you have to do is add the app on Facebook and you can just use the same URLs but I believe what was happening was that, that this app ID with just a page tab isn't allowed to request permission from Facebook users so you actually have to declare an app so that this app ID can ask permission to get into the friends list um, so now let's take a look at what's happening when we click on a beer we get the permission login with Facebook um, this app will receive your basic info so this is where if you added more variables to your scope um, when you were declaring the whole Facebook API uh, in your JavaScript you would get all of those permissions down here um, so we're just going to click login with Facebook allow the app and there's my friends list popped up um, we can do some CSS on this and make it look all nice um, as opposed to just having an unorganized UL just dumped right on the page so then if I click on somebody nothing happens so now we have to add in the links to each one of these LIs to actually finish the post okay so now that we have our app popping and asking for the proper permissions um, we can move forward with this and what we'll see is the LIs that get generated um, from each friend has an on click to a method called person selected which we haven't imported yet so now we're gonna copy and paste that over alright so here's our person selected method or function rather and yeah, we're just gonna paste it there so you can see what this does this takes person as an argument so from our li um, what we see is we give it the Facebook ID of the friend um, as the argument to person selected and then we use their uh, facebook.com slash ID slash picture for the image source and then we do uh, dot name for the friends name to print in all the li's so we send them the Facebook ID 
um, and then this function calls fb.ui it does the feed method so we're going to post to a person's feed um, and this is the idea of the person that was selected the name is going to come from this div here um, or the one above it the name here um, and then we're going to get a link that we filled in um, the image and then we're going to give it a caption so just put freeze and beer um, and then a description so these center tags are a little hack I did to get multiple lines in the description um, Facebook pulls out the uh, new line character so to get new lines you can wrap everything you want on a single line in between center tags and it'll put uh, the contents of each center tag on its own line uh, and then we just have a function that gets called after this executes and it says if um, it was posted successfully we're gonna pop a little box that says post published or if they hit cancel on the post we're gonna say post failed so let's give this a try and see So I'm going to give a Bud Light, scroll way down here, you can see the pictures are still all pulling in, it's a lot of images to load all at once. I'm going to give that to Tommy Park. Alright, so picture URL is not properly formatted, so at least they give us an error message and tell us what's going on here. So let's go and then we see the post failed. Um, let's go take a look at the picture URL. So here is our picture URL. Okay, so over here what we can do is fire up Firebug. Um, let's just go to this LI here. And we'll go all the way up to the top of that. We can just close off this whole UL and we want to look here so image okay so we need okay so it's just giving the relative path we need to give the fully qualified domain name uh, all the way down to this image for Facebook to take it okay so for our URL here we're just gonna put HTTP colon slash slash uh, we'll do it with HTTPS, Facebook, video1.hackedexistence.com slash, and then fill in the rest of the, actually, it already has a slash, so we take that out. All right, let's give that a try. Let's see if that works now. So we'll go to Bud Light. <clears throat> And we'll scroll down to Tommy Park. Alright, so now we've popped this whole little thing here. It says to Tommy Park. It's got me. I can write a message here. Bud Light. It's got the little picture there. we got free as in beer. Our brewery, our type uh, is null. I should probably fix that. I'll say have a Bud Light. I'll hit share. And you'll see the post was published. So now, if I go to Tommy Park's page, you see right here we've got have Bud Light. And if we click it, it takes us to the Bud Light page on our website, which is pretty cool. So, that's basically how to set up a Facebook tab, um, have it pull stuff from your back end. Uh, what are you doing, computer? All right, so hopefully by this point you've got something kind of resembling what we have here where you can populate in your own images, um, load the friends list, and then engage each person individually. Um, so when you're developing Facebook tabs, you have to be really careful. Um, the API changes a lot. They don't really do a lot to document it. It's getting better but it's come a long way and it used to be really bad
but now it's it's pretty trivial to get the iframe at least working. Uh, a lot of the graph interaction is still kind of hard and requires a lot of debugging, but you guys should be able to figure it out, so good luck.